Keith Smith, Yahoo Sports covers the NBA. Uh, and obviously, it seems that the NBA uh, is pretty much on target to get its season back on track. We will get into that and some other things right now with Keith Smith here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Keith, what's going on, man? Welcome back. Hey, Mike. How are you? All is well, man. Uh, you know, July 31st. Before, you know, it sounds like this is a foregone conclusion, but with baseball and everything that's going on, do you see any stumbling blocks in the way of the NBA uh, to get this thing off the ground? Barring something really unexpected, which it's 2020, so, I mean, maybe we should expect <laughs> the unexpected. But barring something really unexpected, no, I think it's, it's going to be, you know, go here. It sounds like all that they're – doing is uh you know crossing the t's and dotting the i's with disney as far as what the agreement will look like to finally you know settle everything on that end but preparations are already well underway on the disney side to host the nba um here in central florida and it sounds like you know we'll we'll start seeing uh teams arrive here in you know approximately a month or so yeah i was gonna say can you kind of map out what the next uh from like now up you know the next month or so will look like for these nba teams Sure, yeah. So what's happening right now is teams are starting to recall their players uh, back to their to their cities and to their practice facilities. All 30 practice facilities are now open. And so now that they're all open, um, one of the things that they're doing is they're bringing back those guys, especially those overseas players who may have gone home, because the country you know, kind of dictates what the rule is on coming in from another country and how long you have to self-quarantine and all those sorts of things. So that's, you know, they're doing that right now. Then it's going to be get everybody back into the gym for these, you know, kind of, you know, light workouts and start ramping up, up activity and the like over a couple weeks after that. And then everyone's going to pack up and come to Central Florida in early July. Uh, it sounds like the rivals are going to, they're going to ask that they be staggered uh, somewhat. So you might see, you know, four or five teams one day, four or five teams another day. And then they're going to go through about a three week training camp or so. Um, here at Walt Disney World, and then that'll be what gets them geared up and ready to play. In that, they may play, they're calling them exhibition games, but they're probably going to be more like kind of glorified scrimmages. I don't even know that they'll be on TV or anything like that. And then they're going to start games right up on July July 31st, rather, is the target start date. Is anything going to change now that the MLS is playing in the same spot when it comes to the health rules-wise? No, no, they're actually, uh, it sounds like they are both adopting very similar health protocols. Um, we don't know exactly what the resort situation is for either league just yet. I, I know there's been a lot of rumors of what's going on with each league and, and the like, but it sounds like they may, there's probably not necessarily going to be overlap in the resorts, but uh, they will overlap at the ESPN model of the sports complex. There's really no, no uh, way to avoid that. Um, and it is all in one area. They're not going to be exactly on top of each other and, you know, the soccer teams will be primarily out at the soccer field and the like. Both groups have said there's not really going to be any walk room time as far as there's not going to be any showers. It sounds like it's going to be, you know, you show up, you're pretty much ready to go, you play your game, and then everybody loads back in, you head back to, to your resort, and that's where, you know, you shower and do all that the stuff you would normally do at the arena. Um, but, yeah, it's not really going to change anything. The sports complex is massive. It's, you know, 200-plus acres of uh, sports fields and the like and, and the arenas. So, you know, there's some talk that maybe they could attend each other's games, and I think that's all going to be worked out and see what that looks like. But as of right now, you know, should be no impact to either league. Yeah, that's interesting, you know, uh, because the thought of playing games completely empty and, and just having nobody in there, you wonder, like, if they're going to let other – you know, teams kind of hang out and sit in there if they're all kind of tested uh, just to have some sort of – and that might be an interesting uh, – I was thinking about this the other day, Keith. An interesting addition is if the two teams are playing and the crowd is actually other NBA players watching those games, like that might be a very uh, interesting kind of storyline. Yeah, I think that would be great. You know, AAU style, right? I, right. Those are, that's how I grew up, playing AAU ball and – you know, we were always in there, and, you know, when them when uh, one of the better teams or better players in there, you had a little extra bounce in your step. You wanted to show show, show yourself a little bit out on the court. So that, that could be a lot of fun with that. I, I Just knowing the way the NBA works and these guys are, you know, when they get in there, they get in there, they do their work, they, you know, do what they got to do to get ready for the game. It's all so regimented that I don't know that that's exactly, you know, what, uh, what, what will happen. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this all um, – you know, ultimately goes down. It sounds like families, you know, after maybe the second round of the playoffs will be allowed to come in. 
Um, I know the plans are loosely that media will sit in some of the spots in the stands and be, you know, uh, social distance there as well and the like. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how they put this together, what they do about crowd noise and all that. But I'm a, I'm a fan of either let the players come in and, you know, kind of hang out and mill around and watch games or just give me the sounds of the games. I don't want piped in crowd noise. I don't want video game noises. I just want to hear, you know, hear what we could hear. Is there any news or progress on the additions that they were going to add for home court advantage? Yeah, nothing really. Everything has gone pretty quiet on that front. And there were a lot of people who came out so strongly against a lot of the ideas that it may just be something that now it kind of comes and goes and they say, forget it. And we're not you know, going to do any of those things. Cause there, there was a big concern, especially from coaches of turning this into a circus. And they didn't, you know, they understand, but they're kind of looking at it and say, we're all in the same boat here. You have your team prepared well enough and you're good enough. And you shouldn't need, you know, little advantages built in to win games. So I don't know that we're going to see any of them. Uh, Keith Smith uh, at Keith Smith, NBA talking some hoops with us. Uh, and I guess there are some hoops, you know, to talk about. We're going to be out in the court soon. Uh, what are some, you know, I, I read something about Joel and B you know, he's really amped up his, uh, workouts. It's interesting because he's saying he's working out six days a week. We've seen these uh, pictures of Ben Simmons. I mean, he looks like uh, a new man almost. And then you've heard stories about like Luka Doncic is kind of out of shape. Uh, what are some of the interesting things that you've heard about what the players have done or what they're doing to get ready for this? Yeah, so we're we're definitely hearing different you know uh, reports about some of these guys overseas have been playing and pick up games as you mentioned um other guys you know we're starting to see it's kind of that the off-season mentality of you know 15 pounds of muscle you know everybody everybody looks great and they're, you know they're all jacked and ready to go um but one of the things that's interesting is talking with a couple of trainers one of the things that they're concerned about was you know, there was a photo that went around of mark this all who looks like he lost a lot of weight and one of the things that they're actually just as worried about is guys losing too much weight um, you know, for a lot of players, it's a struggle to keep on weight during the season because um, everything is just so tight and compressed and they burn so many calories a day that they worry about that. And that's something that they're concerned about is, you know, we don't want these guys coming back, you know, too small. We, we, there's also because of the nature of what they had available to them during the shutdown is, you know, did some guys just sit around and lift weight for three months? ultimately by the time we, you know, see them again. And is that good for, you know, basketball mobility and flexibility and agility. So that's going to be interesting to see what that looks like. And I, I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but but uh, Woj is just tweeting now that there's some uh, breaking news that there's a group of players that isn't so sure about playing um, now. And there's there's growing concerns on that. So that's a, that's a whole new story that's just coming out live as we're talking right now. I was actually, yes, and, and seeing that is that, that Florida's been getting a little bit of a spike down there. You're obviously in the Orlando area, Keith, and it was something that we kind of discussed was, hey, where all the spikes are going on, are the players going to be like, you know what, I, I don't know that I do feel as comfortable as I did maybe two weeks ago. Yeah, and, and I think that's fair. You know, I, don't, I would never presume to tell any player how they should or shouldn't feel about their own health. All I would say is, yes, we have seen an increase here in the central Florida area, especially Orange County around Disney, but it's an increase from almost nothing, you know, in relative terms, up to, you know, still what would be, you know, almost, uh, you know, incredibly low numbers for the remainder of the country. Now, you know, a lot of spots all over the world are starting to creep back up because, you know, especially in our country, as a lot of people have started to say, I'm going out, you know, it's been three months, I'm going out, I'm going to do my thing now, and those kind of things. So we're starting to see some of that here in Central Florida, but our numbers, you know, still remain relatively low, and the belief has always been is keep, get them to Walt Disney World healthy, kind of do the best you can to lock, lock uh, folks down, and then let's do, do our thing as far as keeping everybody healthy while they're here with continuous testing and the like. So it's going to be interesting, it's interesting to see what comes of this, Ultimately, because if, if, if there's at least enough players talking about it that Woj is tweeting about it, you got to start to wonder there's got to be a handful of prominent players in the mix there as well. I don't think they're all just role players on many teams that have you know barely any chance of making it into the playoffs. What are the broadcasts potentially going to look like? Is it still going to be an ESPN, TNT thing? Because it's at an ESPN property, are they going to get more broadcasts? Uh, are they going to have broadcasters on site? Are we going to see you know, the home team uh, TV and radio guys able to go? Are newspaper reporters like yourself guys going to be able to be there? Yeah, I think you're going to see very little media presence on the property um, for a couple of reasons. One is 
sounds like the broadcasters are going to be, you know, uh, limited to maybe the national guys, but they may not even come on site until we're into the conference final round. And then, of course, the NBA finals. And that's, you know, part of uh, safety precautions for themselves as well. And one of the things that we're hearing that a lot of the local team and then some of the TNT, I believe it was Kevin Harlan said, sounds like that they're going to do these games remotely, that they're going to pick up a feed from the arena, and then they'll be together somewhere. Um, sounds like TNT may gather in Atlanta where their headquarters are, and then uh, the local teams will gather in their you know, broadcast studios, and then they're going to call the game from there, and then that's how the game gets presented out to the teams for the eight, eight uh, regular season games, whatever playing games there are, and then the first round of the playoffs, and then, then it turns over to national TV anyway. As far as uh, print media goes, whether that be you know, online or you know traditional newspaper routes, I don't think you're going to see a ton of beat writers here because part of the challenge is yeah, what's already been put out there and it's so all being negotiated and worked out was if you come and you're part of the bubble, you're committed to, you're staying the entire time. You're going to stay for you know the, the whole three-month deal. You're going to be there from the beginning, you're going to be there till the end, and you're not going to leave. And that's going to be very cost-prohibitive. Uh, for a lot of places, we've unfortunately seen a lot of media um, around the area just in the past week. You know, unfortunately, had to let some folks go uh, as they try to you know navigate this new world that we're in. So, so I don't know if you're going to see a lot of people. But it sounds like there's going to be a secondary tier of you go, you just attend games, you kind of can write your gamer from there, and then your access is you know Zoom conference calls and the like for uh, player and coach access, and that may be what it is. But I don't know how big the media presence is going to be. I think they're going to try to keep it very small and limited to the folks who have to be there to play the game. All right, Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA, and of course uh, Yahoo. You can check his uh, work out all over on the NBA. He's been uh, really uh, out in front of this uh, whole Disney World uh, setup and uh, how it's going to look, and it's going to be really interesting. MLS will be there now as well. I mean, that place is going to be a sports uh, heaven for a couple of weeks there in July, August, and and all the way deep into I guess uh, the NBA season. I guess that's the next the possible stumbling blocks taking you to next season would really be the question is, you know, what is next year going to look like December 1st uh, around Christmas time? I mean, I guess that's going to be a big question uh, after this season is completed. Yeah, it absolutely is. That's kind of the next bigger question. You know, once, once the details are finalized, well, what are we doing about next year? And it's, you know, all indications are they want to play games in their home arenas to start next season, which sounds like everybody knows it's not going to be able to start mid October because, that's when this season ends. So it'll be uh, the NBA kind of pushed out there. You know, let's, you were thinking December 1st. Players Association immediately fired back and said, yeah, we're thinking no. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we'll, you know, talk late December. So I would assume, you know, they'll probably settle in between somewhere in the mid-December range. Things are going to be compressed. There's going to be more back-to-back, more four and five nights. Things that the NBA over the last, you know, several years has really gone well of eliminating in their schedule. They've added days into the season. They've added, you know, about a couple weeks onto the season on the front end um, there to try and, you know, keep those things down. And it wasn't all that long ago that back-to-back in the playoffs weren't, you know, they, they weren't an uncommon thing either. And those have all been completely eliminated. So we may see them really compress things as they try to get back to the regular calendar because, this, you know, starting in uh, December thing is not going to be a regular thing at least for a few more years. All right, Keith Smith, of course, like all guests appeared, via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Always a pleasure, Keith. Take care, pal. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, man. We'll talk to Keith again next week. As we get closer, we can start looking at maybe matchups and all that kind of good stuff.